Mr. Chancellor, it is my honor to present to you Ms. Claire Akamanzi, a public administrator who has contributed greatly to Rwanda's renaissance. Claire Akamanzi was born and raised in Uganda to Rwandan refugee parents, and despite having to move frequently, she eventually obtained degrees in trade and investment law. She began her career as a diplomat in London, then a trade negotiator at the World Trade Organization in Geneva. But her talents soon attracted the attention of Rwandan President Paul Kagame. Elle a été responsable de la stratégie et de la politique du président Kagame et fait actuellement partie de son cabinet. Peu importe où elle va, Madame Akamanzi se démarque par son dévouement. En 2016, à l'obtention de son diplôme de maîtrise en administration publique de la Harvard Kennedy School, elle s'est vue accorder trois distinctions. Une première pour son excellence universitaire, une deuxième pour son attachement au service public et une troisième pour sa contribution à la communauté. She considers the greatest of Rwanda's many natural resources its people. An emphasis on science and technology is at the center of policies the current government has adopted to transform from an agrarian to a service-based economy. As CEO of the Rwanda Development Board, she's helping spur private sector growth and attract foreign investment to expand the country's finance, telecommunication, and travel industry, among others. Under her oversight, investment and tourism have grown. Rwanda Air, for example, has capitalized on its central location and tourism to become a hub for Africa and the continent's fastest growing airline. Thanks to all these policies and their rigorous measurement and reporting, the country has climbed 150 places on the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business Index since, since 2006. Mr. Chancellor, on behalf of Senate and the Board of Governors, it is my privilege and honor to present to you Ms. Claire Akamanzi, so that you may confer upon her the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. I would now like to ask our new doctor, Dr. Amanzi, to address the convocation. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, honored platform guests, graduating class, family and friends, good morning. I would like to begin by expressing my most sincere appreciation to Concordia University. I'm truly humbled by this recognition. But I must say, you have put pressure on me. I now feel thoroughly motivated to live up to the expectations of one with the honorary doctorate. This honor does not accrue to me as an, as an individual but to my country and the leadership team I have been proud to contribute to, led by our president, who is the giant on whose shoulders we all stand. We serve the people of Rwanda 
and are continually inspired by them. Their resilience and determination demonstrates that the pursuit of excellence is a choice available to anyone, from anywhere, no matter how bad the hand that fate, the hand that fate has apportioned to you. The genocide against Tutsis was stopped in 1994, when young, brave men and women liberated our country and restored a sense of unified nationhood. Until then, many of us, myself included, had been born in exile to refugee parents with little hope of ever having a country to call our own. Those experiences not only instilled a strong incentive to work hard and succeed, but also a determination to eliminate all the underlying causes of refugee status for ourselves and others. After the tragedy that meant reimagining Rwanda as a country on a path to prosperity, rather than just one that survives on the charity of others. My main contribution began in 2006, when I was appointed Deputy Director General in our National Investment Agency. I did not feel ready. I was only 27. <coughs> I figured there had been some mistake. Maybe someone thought I was much older than I actually was. It felt like being given an Airbus 380 to fly with hardly a pilot's license, or maybe to be politically correct, I should say Bombardier. <laughs> I compensated by trying to dress the part with oversized dark suits, high-heeled shoes, big jewelry, and an older, la an older lady's hairstyle. I soon realized this was nothing special. In Rwanda's context, everyone was called upon to do things they may not feel prepared for. Our country had, thrown, had, had been thrown in the deep end of history, and it was sink or swim. I faced doubt, fear, and sure, I did make mistakes. But I also learned a whole lot from them, particularly that failure to act was more costly than the mistakes resulting from taking action. So I started to relax and focus on doing the very best for my country. But our leaders knew what they were doing. There was a lot of support from above, beginning with my president, a real team spirit. My first lesson was that a key role, a key role for any leader is to support and mentor the next generation of leaders and create an effective team. <laughs> the second lesson that I learned is that credibility is earned. Results speak loudest. Only 24 years ago, Rwanda was a failed state. Today, we have made good progress, a fact that serves as a beacon of hope for other countries in difficulty. There's always a positive way forward. For example, Rwanda, as the country that has made the most progress on the United Nations Development, Human Development Index over the last 25 years, and we also r rose to be ranked the fifth safest country in the world, as well as the second easiest place to do business in Africa. Rwanda has also achieved the biggest drops in maternal and child mortality ever recorded. Ladies and gentlemen, how can a country transcend tragedy? Let me share four thoughts that may be relevant to you. First, never accept the status quo. However much the odds are against you, you can always aim and achieve better. Never underestimate your potential to be among the best in the world. We refused the nation, that we refused the notion that Africa is dirty and disorganized. We reject the idea that Africa lacks the ability to rise and prosper on its own. Second, aim high and stay focused on your goals. We are not a wealthy country, but we've built a national airline, a national broadband fiber optic infrastructure with 4G LTE connectivity, and a world-class conversion center. We were told that these were wrong priorities for a poor country, but we were convinced that private sector development is the most sustainable poverty reduction strategy, so we stayed the course. Third, leave no one behind 
be inclusive. In order to build a country that all Rwandans, for the very first time, identified with, everyone had to participate. We created platforms for national debate, including town hall sessions hosted by the president and other leaders in all the corners of the country. Whatever you choose to do in life, always remember this. Involving others in designing solutions that affect them will ensure ownership and ultimately sustainability. Lastly, stand for what is right and be willing to fight for it, even if it's not popular. Two years, two years ago, the East African community of several countries decided to, to discourage importation of used secondhand clothing in order to promote domestic textile production and also restore the dignity of our people so they could also wear new clothing. The United States recently retaliated with a tariff on exports of new clothing from Rwanda. Does that sound familiar, Canada? <laughs> but it was the right thing to do and we are standing by it. Dignity is not granted. You have to claim it. In Rwanda, we call this agachiro. Young Africans and their leaders today demand for equal representation globally and for a voice. I hope you become the generation that takes Africa as a partner, as a place of opportunity and possibility, and not as a target of pity. I wish to conclude by extending a very spe special word of gratitude to all the parents and families here today. My own family has been a pillar of support throughout my life journey, and I'm sure that is the case for all of you today. I thank them, I thank my country, and above all, I wish you every success in your endeavors. Thank you for your kind attention. I want to thank you so much for your powerful remarks. We're dealing with the future leadership of our country, and I think the values that you've instilled in our graduating class today will last with them as very powerful messages. Thank you. <laughs>